and then I also have to have a bustle and I have to be covered in gears. You don't, you don't have to. Um, just uh, take whatever inspiration you want and then put it together. If you want to be covered in gears, go for it. <laughs> I'm the most steampunk man in the world. I'm a giant top hat with goggles on it. <laughs> I'm steampunk. Oh, it's going to be a dragon con this year. <laughs> I hope so. People will dress up. A giant gear. A giant gear. With goggles on and gears. More gears. There you go. Cliche steampunk guy. It's it's my it's my new name. <laughs> I'm Captain Steam. <laughs> yeah, but 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 don't let yourself be limited to these few things that people uh, say are iconically steampunk. Branch out if you want to. Any other? The Outlanders just snuck in, trying to <laughs> look all like, ooh. <laughs> we don't know what steampunk is. <laughs> all in pink <laughs> with lots of bones. people. So, come on, question. Don't be shy. Oh, everyone in the front row, of course, keeps asking questions. What's up? That's why we're up here, so you can actually be exact. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh. I'm afraid of fruit. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> question because a friend of mine has started a whole thing of the steampunk plumber because we had gotten to a we got into a big discussion about how looking th across the the cosmos of steampunk people and what their characters are they all keep being countesses and baronesses and captains of steampunk the things and travelers and explorers and and we got into the conversation of well well who cleans up after them you know where you know, who who well, yeah. Where is the steampunk janitor? Where are the where are the carpenters? Where are the manual labor? Where you know where where are the normal the people who yeah I don't want to be in it. I don't want to be in an airship as I will throw up. Um, you know <laughs> these are these are good questions. So you know I, so he started a whole character of steam, uh, that he's a steampunk plumber and you know he charges an exorbitant rate to do to to do plumbing on airships as he is afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> and it costs extra. And also, he's apparently the only steampunk boy. Right. There, and he's the only one. So well, the, hey, it's a it. yeah. It's, he's got a monopoly on the market. But yeah. But right, steampunk air traffic controller. As as we want tower. Yes. Yep. Swinging oil lamps is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's no land. There's. It's only oceans, and we're all in airships. It's going to be water world. fly around in a giant top hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, that's also something like don't limit yourself to having to be, you know, you don't have to be an explorer or, or, a, or a countess or baroness or royalty or, or whatever, and you don't have to. You could ride around in a train or a, a submarine or, you know, what, or a boat. Who cares? You could have a car. You could have a steam-powered car. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Don't limit yourself because everybody else is doing it that way. You could do ride around on a steam-powered chicken, exactly. Or a whale. A steam-powered whale would be really nice. <laughs> awesome. Right. Yes. Exactly, you would need a lady in waiting or what what have you. you know. And I think those are going to become the most interesting costumes. If you're interested in finding a costume that's really unique within the steampunk scene, all of this gentleman adventure, lady right. adventure stuff is, is um, going to get a little old because there's so many of them. Um, so odds are somebody at the same convention is doing it slightly better than you are, which would be sad. Well, makes you but fine. you can find your niche and do that really well. And if you're picking um, a costume for a character that 
that nobody else is doing, like a steampunk plumber, <laughs> <laughs> then right. guaranteed you're probably the only steampunk He's gonna wear overalls. That <laughs> He's gonna wear overalls and, and a tool belt. I believe is what I his idea is. Maybe. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, yes, yes, my boyfriend does. <laughs> We, well, we, we, on our show, we have the evil organization Clang, and we actually have, they actually, they actually are, are constantly recruiting evil members of the organization, and there, we, there are actually two people that are local, that are Clang members, that come out to our events and cause us, us much trouble. And they did this without us prompting them? Yes. <laughs> completely, completely uninvited. They started their MySpace page. <laughs> They dressed up as bad guys and started sending us threatening emails, <laughs> <laughs> which is fantastic. <laughs> we encouraged that, though, so <laughs> it's great to be on the, re the radio show, reading through your email and wanting to poo your pants because you don't know if it's real or not. <laughs> well, this person is threatening us, um, but it's with a with with buckets of chicken that they have in accidentally created or something. So there's that element of ridiculous that kind of makes you go, oh wait, this isn't real. Or it is. And, and we're about to be bombarded by KFC. I don't think it, <laughs> it could be really greasy. <laughs> but yeah, so there's there are villains and, and we do like to um, encourage we also like to encourage participation on our show. Like we, we have several people that, that are guests that come on and, and interact and do ridiculous things. Um, I think most of which without it, us really prompting them to. I know Phineas started just because he was showing up. And we said, if you're going to be here, you might as well do something. Yeah. So. And I think that's one of the best. I don't know if anybody's listened to the radio show, but it's one of the best parts of the show is that um, my, my former roommate, who plays the character of Phineas P. Moneyload? Um, it's this incredibly. Rogue financier. He's not here, so because he's just this bumbly, stutters a lot, really, just like oh, do do do, hey guys. <laughs> but but he sat down that first night in the radio station, and he asked for a pen and piece of paper, and he scribbled for like 20 minutes, and he went, okay, I'm I'm ready to go now. So at midnight we said, okay, now Phineas P. Moneyload, who is our rogue financier, gets the money so we can keep doing the show, is going to bring you some sponsors. And it was a complete transformation. He turned into this amazing, bellowing, completely bombastic. charismatic, bombastic character. <laughs> and um, and now when he he dress up as well, not even as Phineas P. Money. No, the last time he dressed up, he was the orphan catcher. Right. Um, and had a bag. <laughs> orphan <laughs> catcher and had a bag on his head. He had a had a, had like a. A, a burlap sack, a burlap on sack with one eye on it, and he was the orphan catcher. It was but, it was really creepy. But <laughs> the, tra the transformation was amazing. So it's really cool to see what people will do when they're given the opportunity to to make a butt of themselves on the radio. Go for it. You can't nope. see the people that are listening to this. You don't even know that anybody's listening to this. We're gonna be talking to ourselves for two hours. So go crazy. And it's really cool to see what people will do when they're just given you know very loose confines of uh, make it sort of Victorianish. <laughs> Anybody else? 